<laughs> nice of the princess to invite us over for a picnic, eh, Luigi? I hope she made lots of spaghetti. Luigi, look! It's from Bowser. Dear pesky plumbers, the Koopalings and I have taken over the Mushroom Kingdom. The princess is now a permanent guest at one of my seven Koopa hotels. I dare you to find her if you can. We gotta find the princess. And you gotta help us. If you need instructions on how to get through the hotels, check out the enclosed instruction book. Hotel Mario, developed by Philips Fantasy Factory and published by Philips Interactive Media in 1994 for the Philips CDI, is a curious game. It's garnered quite the reputation as being one of, if not the worst, Mario game ever made. The history behind the game is pretty surprising. After Nintendo broke their deal with Sony to create a CD-based add-on for the Super Nintendo, they instead partnered with Philips. This was because their contract with Philips gave Nintendo complete control of the SNES CD game licensing. This was not the case with the original Sony deal. The SNES CD went through development hell for years. Then, by 1993, with Sega's own Sega CD floundering and the development of the Nintendo 64 underway, it was clear that a CD add-on simply didn't make much sense anymore. However, because of the contract that Nintendo had signed with Philips, Philips was given licensing to make their own games using some of Nintendo's characters. This led to Philips making four games based on those characters for their own CDI system. Link, The Faces of Evil, Zelda, The Wand of Gamelon, Zelda's Adventure, and of course, Hotel Mario. Some of the more common complaints against Hotel Mario can also apply to the Zelda CDI games. I must say that overall, Hotel Mario at least isn't nearly that bad. Some of the real issues being that Hotel Mario's controls are a bit stiff. Mario just doesn't jump in that fluid way that we're used to. Jumping up into an enemy on the floor above you makes no sense and gives the game unnecessary and unfair difficulty. The controls are also backwards to what Mario games usually are. Normally you hold B to run and jump with A. The reason being is that your thumb can more comfortably hold both buttons in this order. Here though, those actions are swapped, so that takes a little getting used to. When you go in a door or elevator, you have to press up, but to get out, you have to press down, no matter if you're at an up or down elevator. Then there are the cutscenes. Uh-oh! Where am I? Suffice it to say, they're bad. Poorly written, acted, and animated. All the jokes fall completely flat. Ha uh ha, -huh. here's the problem, too many toasters. You know what they say, all toasters, toast, toast. Very flat. But really, the biggest complaint most people seem to have is that of the overall gameplay. And this is where I begin to disagree. Hotel Mario isn't your standard platformer. Instead, it's more of an arcade-style action game with a sort of puzzle element as you're not running and jumping platforms to get to the end of a stage. Here, while you do still dodge and kill enemies, the goal is to close doors. Now, from a story perspective, I find that to be one of the dumbest things I've ever heard of. First, what relevance does a closed door have to do with harming an enemy? Is there a problem with the air circulation or something? Second, it's established that these are Koopa hotels, so the Koopa kids own these hotels and are renting the rooms out. Do they expect to have at least one room always available? The whole thing just makes no sense. So while the logic behind the game is pretty lame, the actual gameplay itself isn't half bad. It's fast-paced arcade gaming. Every hotel does something new, making you adapt to it. Things like lights flickering, making it harder to see, or ice floors giving you less traction. It's all pretty well balanced, except for the aforementioned enemies on the floor above you harming you. That's just flat-out bad design. But really, when it comes down to being a bad Mario game, there are much worse out there. Hell, it's not that bad of a game in general. I think part of the problem is when it was released and the expectations set for it at the time. By 1994, we already had the classic Super Mario World on Super Nintendo and Super Mario Land 1 and 2 on Game Boy. Not to mention the re-releases of the original Mario games with Super Mario All-Stars. 
So making an 80s style arcade game for a home console by this time and expecting it to be a system seller on a console nobody knew about, it was simply doomed from the start. Sure, it's a pretty dumb and silly game, but I have fun playing it. And really, that's all that matters.